time together to, today, I invite us to begin with praying to the God of the universe, the God who dwells among us even now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, for your presence that is always with us. No matter where we find ourselves, you are always closer to us than we can imagine. King David, so many years ago, discovered the joy of that reality as he penned the beautiful words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And even though we may go through the valley of the shadow of death, we are not afraid, for you are with us. Your staff and your rod, they comfort us. And even more so, you prepare a table, bountiful table, in the presence of our enemies. And so, Lord, as we worship you this time, I pray for your blessing to be upon us all and that we may bless you and glorify you, discovering once again the joy of lifting up praises to you, of focusing our hearts and minds and our strength in adoration of you, to seek you. And may it all bring glory and beauty and honor and praise to your name, for you are worthy of it all. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, the Messiah, who has himself promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and who is with, who is with us now. In his name we pray.
Welcome again, and I'm glad you're joining us for another devotion as we go into the Gospel of Matthew. We, this morning or afternoon, whenever you happen to be uh, checking out this video, we are looking at the ninth chapter of Matthew, uh, going from verse 14 through verse 17. Then John's disciples came to Jesus, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one patches an old garment with unshrunk cloth because the patch pulls away from the garment and makes the tear worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, the wine spills out, and the skins are ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your word. So we go into your word today. Please speak to us as only you can. And open our minds and hearts to be able to hear as you are so faithful in transforming our hearts and minds to think the way you think and to be aware of the truth and to know, to know you, to know your voice, to know the voice of your spirit and to glorify who you are in all of what we think and say and do. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So fasting, we'll talk about fasting a bit. Um, I've said on a number of occasions, and I think it continues to deserve repeating, that we live in a culture that approaches Christianity or views Christianity as something that someone can participate in and even embrace or consider themselves an active participant with that is void or separated from discipleship. In other words, our culture views discipleship as an option, but not as something that is essential or mandatory or required. And when you take a look at Jesus' ministry, he as a teacher calls to himself disciples. Disciples are those people that are intentionally set on learning the discipline. That's where they get the words from. Learning spiritual disciplines that are a result of Jesus' teaching and as such are able to experience and live from the reality of the kingdom of God that Jesus taught, preached, proclaimed, and demonstrated. So discipleship, um, if, if you think about it, Jesus in his ministry never called anyone to be a church member. Now the church membership is bad. He just never did. He called them to be disciples. And because it may be foreign in our culture, when we take a look at discipleship, we may not understand the full impact of what that means. Learning the discipline, learning spiritual disciplines is not something that is righteousness. It doesn't make us righteous. However, spiritual disciplines, discipleship is wisdom. Learning how to pray, learning how to follow Jesus and what that means learning how to meditate on his word, learning how to be in solitude with him. And in this case, when we get to verse 14, learning how to fast is important. What fasting does is it teaches us, it is the discipline or practice of teaching us how to live from God's word and the, the nutrients, if you will, the life that's found in his word as compared to the physical nourishment that we get from the physical world. There is a um, an incident where Jesus is um, runs into a woman, meets a woman by a well and she's alone. His disciples have gone to get food. 
And Jesus has this conversation with this woman. The disciples then later show up. And in that interaction, they ask Jesus or they, they um, implore, I guess would be a good word, Jesus to eat something. To which Jesus replies, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Jesus begins his ministry even before he goes public. He goes into the desert and fasts for 40 days, learning how to rely on sustenance and power and life that's in God's word, his spiritual word, over and above the physical manifestation of, of uh, God's word, which gives us nutrients in the physical world, plants, food, etc. So fasting is important because what it does is it, set, it, it allows us to become aware of the influence of our bodies over our minds and our, uh, our, our character and our attitudes and allows us to learn how to rely on the word of God. So when John's disciples come, they say to Jesus, why does John's disciples, or I'm sorry, why do we rather, and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not? And at the time, they don't need to fast because Jesus is among them within their midst and they are learning how to receive the sustenance that comes from Jesus' words, his teaching, his actions, his behaviors. They are absorbing it by having him in their presence. The teaching that started in chapter 5 and went through chapter 7 is an example of that. When you get to chapter uh, 8, you see that there's a man that has, is cleansed from an unclean spirit. There's another centurion who has um, a servant who's healed. There's healings at Capernaum. There's demons being driven out. These are all manifestations of the word of God that had become flesh in the person of Jesus. So currently, they don't need that particular discipline to learn how to rely and to, and to draw sustenance from the unseen word of God because Jesus is among them. And he even says this to them in verse 15. Can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. So there will be a time for that discipline. It's just not right now. Then he goes on to con with the teaching. No one patches an old garment with unshrunk cloth because the patch pulls away from the garment and makes the tear worse. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the skins burst, the wine spills out, and the skins are ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wine skins, and both are preserved. This is, this is a uh, reference to fasting. When someone, when, 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 when the, the practice of fasting is employed, it's not just doing without. The doing without is the first step, if you will, but it always must be accompanied by the moving into the seeking of the spiritual sustenance that's in the word of God. So for the, the disciples of John and the Pharisees, they were leaning into the word of God as it was revealed in the Old Testament prophets and the Old Testament history of Israel. Very good to meditate on those things. But now that God is moving in a new way, their fasting in the future for Jesus' disciples will not only be a... Um, um, Re refusing of the physical, but also a moving into the spiritual truth of what God had taught through Jesus, 
what God had done through Jesus, what God is continuing to do even to this very day through Jesus. So as disciples of Jesus, when we fast, we focus our minds, we direct our thoughts in meditation, in prayer on what Jesus, what God is doing through Jesus now, not just what God has done in the Old Testament or through the prophets of Israel. And that's why Jesus refers to putting a new patch on a new garment and putting new wine into new wineskins. That the practice of fasting, beginning with Jesus, will take on a new dimension of spiritual discipline. Now, if you never practice fasting, it's not, it's not dieting. And I think in, in future times, I might even give a seminar, if you will, on, on just that particular discipline of fasting, because it is a powerful, powerful spiritual discipline. Again, it's not righteousness. It doesn't make you better. It doesn't make one perform better in terms of an objective, legalistic manner. But it is wisdom, and it is practiced all through the New Testament. So my friends in Christ, um, my prayer for you today is that you learn how to rely on the sustenance and the life that's in God's word, in Jesus' word, among us by his spirit now, over and above reliance on the physical world, which can only go so far. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and among us. Teach us how to become aware of the reality of your spirit in our lives. And may we, as we awaken to the reality of your kingdom, through your word, learn to rely solely and completely with utter dependence and trust in you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day, and um, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.